This video is sponsored by June's Journey. More on this hidden object mystery game later. In this video, I begin planning the biggest makeover project of my life, the studio. I'm starting from nothing. Well, okay, we have this chair and some insulation, but I'm planning wall placements, electrical, design concepts, flooring and storage. I've never done anything on this scale, but how hard can it be? I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's get into it. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. DIY friends, oh, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and we need to have a grand noodle session. <laughs> if you saw my last video of 2023, part six of my garage build series, I will link it up above if you haven't, I mentioned that I will be focusing much of my 2024 efforts on the studio slash office space that is the top floor of my garage. The ultimate goal when Jeff and I built this garage was to give me a place to do my creative stuff that would not in impact our home life in the way that it has in the last few years. <laughs> Just gaining some kind of work-life balance outside of my home would be mighty nice. I would like to get this space planned out so I know where to start. I have like a general idea of things, but I'm feeling a little lost in how I want it to function. I feel like I just need to talk it out. We need to brainstorm this. And when I did this video for my workshop space downstairs, I will also link that above. I found it super helpful especially with all of your comments to weigh in as well. Get your insight. Uh, maybe you guys have been through this. So let's call this a group effort brainstorm. Leave your ideas in the comments section, please. <laughs> so we're wasting time. Let's go see the space, shall we? Woo Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to the studio space. Like, look how much space we have up here. We can have a freaking dance party. I'm dancing with joy. <laughs> okay, so this is primarily the space. We have a heater up here. We got some insulation. Oh, you think you can get away from the insulation? No, ma'am. It follows you. It follows us everywhere we go in every shot. <laughs> and we have this chair. I just, when I saw it, I was like, I need that in my studio. I don't know why it was just instinctual and I just listened to my gut, my creative instinct and said, I need that chair. I call it the captain's chair. But uh, basically this, this is the space. I mean, you guys have seen it in mini tours before. We have two dormers. We got one dormer with a window over here. We have one dormer with a window over here. And we have one window on the gable end over here. Right where the roof starts to slope down, there's gonna be a wall that runs all the way across to there. So it basically is gonna segregate this side and this side. And then here on this side, this is going to be office right here here then there's going to be a door here and we walk in and where all this insulation is here this is going to be a storage room before anyone asks no there is no washroom in this garage and there is no running water plumbing was one thing that we had to sacrifice right now we have bigger goals for this garage it's going to have a breezeway that connects to our house eventually but there was just complications um, and financially we just couldn't do it but i am going to come up with a good solution for water uh, just to have a sink to you know to wash brushes we're going to do like a diy bucket system uh you know with a pump or something i don't know i'm still figuring it out but i know that there are good solutions not ideal but we're making it work and then out here is going to be the main studio area where I do all of my filming. So it'll function a lot like how my studio in She Shack has been functioning, except now it's just much larger and better, bigger and better. <laughs> it's bigger and better and I love it. It's not the size that counts, it's how you use it. Robin! <laughs> Back here, this is where the entryway is going to be. So there will be a door here and there's going to be a wall that's going to close this up, which is gonna be nice because it's gonna give me more wall space. And then we'll have wall space all the way over to here, past the insulation. We're gonna to have to like see past the insulation today. <laughs> but luckily, because this is the space that I'm focusing on first, the insulation is gonna be the first thing to go because we're gonna be putting it up in the ceilings, we're gonna be putting it in the walls and we're putting it in the floor. So we're gonna be saying bye-bye to the insulation very, very soon. <laughs> 
this spot is just open for possibilities. I don't know what to do with it yet, but it will be a blank wall. So how we utilize that, I do not know. How we utilize this wall, I do not know, but that is what we are here to brainstorm. So let's brainstorm. Okay. Every time I start brainstorming a new space, I always just like to write out a list of wants so that I can kind of factor these into my decision. So last night I gave myself a little bit of a head start and I started to write out my initial list. So this is what I came up with. So the most important things are storage. We need cabinets. We need hidden storage, open storage, all kinds of storage. We need a drink station for all my hot cold combos to make on the fly. I'd like a 360 work table for filming at and creating all my projects at. A photography area with a pull down backdrop. I want some hooks for jackets. A seating area for meetings, work and brainstorms. A writing board for this seating area to brainstorm on. A mobile sink slash wash station. And of course a dog bed because Kenobi needs a place too. So keeping all this in mind, I actually used a design app to help me map the entire space to scale. And this isn't like perfectly accurate, but it's enough to allow me a better idea of layout. So you can kind of see how the office and studio space would work. I think this has a good flow and it doesn't take too much light away from the studio space and the office, but above all else, my biggest goal ultimately will be to build storage. I want to have the best organized organizational systems I can get to optimize how I function in this studio space because being a kind of let's call it a creative beast of all trades uh, just means I have a lot of stuff. I don't want this room to turn into its own hidden object, find the mystery item so Danny can finish her DIY project kind of game. <laughs> Which, speaking of that, segue please, uh, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's episode, June's Journey. <laughs> I love good segue. All right, so I need to start pulling inspiration photos from Pinterest and other places. This is just gonna help give me some direction on what we need to fit into this space. So while I do that over there, this Danny here is gonna tell you about this marvelous mystery game. I have talked about June's journey many times on this channel and I've said it before and I will say it again and again. I love mystery and detective stories. It's kind of why I think Batman is the greatest character of all time. He's the best detective huh? besides June. And I also love hidden object games. So this has kind of just been a great mashup game that I've really enjoyed playing. Although I will say I'm not a huge mobile games person. June's journey has always been like my one exception to the rule. Well, that and Wordle, but I don't know if you can consider Wordle a game, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I've turned to June's Journey in my downtime as a way to unwind. For those who are new to June's Journey, it's a unique hidden object mystery game with a cool detective story that takes place in the 1920s. It's got an awesome group of characters like Amelia, Claire Von Buren, Hunky Jack Hayes, ooh, nice chest hair, Sam Watts, Virginia, and of course, June Parker, our main gal. Each new scene takes you further through a fun murder mystery story that sets June Parker in a daring quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover the family's many secrets. Secrets. What I like about the game is that it has great storytelling. You get placed in all these fun scenes where you have to find the hidden objects and discover clues, but you also have this like design your own island element to the game, which I love. So as you play through the story, you earn flowers, clue discoveries, and money. And with that, you can buy decor, decorative bushes, and pathways, pools, fountains, stables, vineyards, gardens, houses, trees. You can even have some dogs. Hello. <laughs> so you kind of get to grow your game space and design it in a really fun way. It all feels kind of very nostalgic to the games that I love to play when I was younger and it's super fun. Like I mentioned, it's been my go-to before bed to help me unwind, especially if I don't feel like reading. And honestly, I used to turn to social media to fill that hole, but it just wasn't really great for my mental health. This was really fun to play and I just feel like it was the perfect alternative and just a really great way to end my day on a positive note. So if you love hidden object games like me, you're looking for a new app to try, click the link and download it for free and give it a go. Solve the murder and get designing. 
<laughs> Speaking of designing, all right, let's see what Danny over there pulled from Pinterest and other sources uh, so we can get designing ourselves. You find anything? I think I found some good stuff. I'm in my noodling chair. <laughs> Wait. Okay. This thing likes to turn on me. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was pulling images for the studio space, the one thing that I told myself is I want to design a space that can stay in constant change. So I think when it comes down to the walls, I really think I want to go with a neutral base, like either a white or just like a really light cream and not use color because I think I want to use color through the use of fun decor pieces. And I think that's what I want to focus on. So in this brainstorm collage, you're going to see that it's really bright it's full of color it's full of really creative things and so through the use of art and things that I hang on the wall and the furniture pieces I know I'm gonna need to put things in here that brings me joy and that means nerdy stuff that means colorful stuff that means things that make you hum and haw and go well that's strange but I like it and I don't know why <laughs> And those are the things that I love so much. But I'm gonna have to find a really nice balance between my love of antiques and my love of fun color and mash it into one fun space. So I'm just gonna show you this top view that gives you a layout of sizing. So I think what I would love is to have like a giant work table. I can have my camera here, which will shoot this way, or I can put my camera over here, which will shoot this way, or this way, or this way. So it really gives me that 360 access depending on what I wanna do. I would really love to work in a couch and like a little seating area. And my gut is telling me to maybe put it over here. So like, what if we put a couch on this wall? That's my couch. Maybe we have like a little coffee table and then we can also put the chair that I'm sitting in right now. So you can sit there, there's a nice window. Maybe there's like a little bookshelf or something here, or a cabinet that can hold stuff. And then like we add a rug. I feel like the rug is really going to kind of define that area and make it fun so that you know you want to sit down. I don't know, I think that space feels right for that, right? Am I crazy? Okay, so then let's talk about this wall that's gonna be built in front of the stairwell. So, I. I've been struggling with this spot because it's not a huge wall, but it's also not a small wall. I think that this could be a really great place for storage. Maybe we have like long, a long cabinet and then we have like an open area and then maybe there's just like shelves plus some cool decor, a lamp. Maybe the shelves is the way to go. Just custom build everything. Or I did talk about the fact that I wanted a writable board. So what if we did the cap, actually this might work. What if we do cabinets on the bottom and then we do like a writable board that goes on top of it. I would love to hear your suggestions for this wall. All I know is that the bottom I think would be really great for storage. Or this could also be a really little, great little place for the coffee station. So like, I think that would be kind of great, right? Let's talk about the entryway because this is actually, <laughs> Jeff and I are very conflicted about this. He has an idea and I have an idea and we're not sure which way to go with it. So when you come up the stairs, you're gonna open the door. I don't want it so that you're coming in and you're like stepping into the space. You know what I mean? We need to have some kind of landing. Now Jeff thinks that we should just continue the wall so that you kind of have this little triangular step up and then you step in. Like it's just a little corner space and then you're like, yay, I'm in. I was thinking we would kind of bring, have like, you know, a little wall that maybe comes out here and then goes to about maybe this uh, beam here, goes to here and then you'd kind of step up, then you have door that you open and walk in. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Now, depending on how much space we have on this wall, if we have enough room, I thought that this would be a good spot for my photo wall. So at the top, you could have your photo roll that you can pull down different colors, and then this would be a good spot for that. You know, I'd have my camera here. It's quite dark over there, so at least I could control the light pretty well. What do you guys think? 
I mean, we could even put it above the 360 table and then have it pulled down, but that would also mean that the table needs to have wheels on it. So that's a good thing to note. We need to add wheels. <laughs> and then in this back area over here where there's currently a lot of insulation sitting, this is going to be floor to ceiling, slanted ceiling, cabinets. <laughs> and it's all gonna be custom built by me. So I think I'll do two levels, kind of like lockers almost. Um, we're gonna build like locker systems where that don't lock. So I guess we just call them cabinets then. Yeah. I am going to need storage for a lot of things. Like my Cricut stuff, I have so many materials for the Cricut that I need storage for, oh my goodness. Fabrics, odds and ends. I mean, like I said, I do a lot of different things in the DIY space, so I'm just, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need storage. Now, in this dormer window area, I have no idea. I have no idea what I wanna put in here. Call me crazy, but maybe it'll just be nice to leave it open, you know, just for some extra space. I mean, it might be kind of nice to just have a movable table here. When I'm filming a lot, I find this need for an extra little side table, just a place to put things down. Um, and I think that this could be a really great place for this. I also have my paper cabinet though. So maybe if we do the paper cabinet here, and then at least that's a surface. And then maybe we have another little table or something that can sit, it's low, I don't know. You know, we could even just add a, like a little utility cart, maybe that gets stored in this spot. That's a rolly cart to hold all of my DIY materials for the projects that I'm working on. Maybe that's enough. I don't know, what do you guys think? What could I put in this dormer area? So for lighting, I'm gonna be putting pot lights in this space and the pot lights are just gonna be for house lights when I just need general lighting. I will be bringing in my filming lights that I think I'm gonna have some attachments on the ceiling that I can turn on and off. And then for flooring, I've been going back and forth of whether or not I wanna go with either a hardwood, some kind of cleanable laminate, or maybe I go with like a carpet tile, something similar like when I put in that community center. Um, in Scarborough. The carpet tile is great because it keeps things very quiet. It's really great for sound. It's pretty easy to clean. I mean, it doesn't show dirt, but then I think what will happen if I spill paint on it or anything gets spilled on it, then it's just gonna suck and look really bad. I embrace the make it messy motto. And I think if, you know, if the DIY project requires you to make it messy, then make it messy. And that includes getting paint on the floor, sparkles on the floor, glue on the floor, epoxy on the floor, you name it. If it's on the floor, whoops. So I think it'll be really interesting to hear what you guys think about this. I think the hardwood or laminate is the way to go because there are some nice looking laminate out there. So it might be the best way, the best bang for my buck. It can look good, it's gonna be cheap, and it won't make me feel bad if I spill anything on it. Okay, so let's move on to the office, a space I am very excited for. I'm gonna pull up the photos that I pulled into here. So as you can see, this gets a little bit more moody. As many of you know, I actually just made over my office space last week. I added a very kind of dark academia, gothic appeal to my Ikea shelves. And guys, I just, I love it so much. Being in that space just feels right. And I really think I want to bring that energy into this office as well. So in here, you'll see that I kind of really brought in some more moody wallpaper. We got some richer colors with the greens, cool lighting, a really fun dark velvet chair. I brought in a fun rug, but again, it's kind of that rusty brown color. So it really feeds into that cozy appeal that I love. But you'll see here that we have some industrial windows. So so I was thinking about the wall that needs to cut off the office space to the studio space. And I didn't wanna just make a giant wall because I have this beautiful window here and I don't wanna discount the light that's going to come from that window. So I kept thinking, how can I still bring the light through but segregate the space? And a fun kind of industrial style wall was kind of my answer. I mean, we do have the challenge of the slanted wall, the gable style roof. But can it be done? Absolutely. It just might mean that I have to custom build certain windows and then source old windows in the other, in the more flatter areas. 
but I just thought it would be feed into kind of that industrial style that I love so much. And it will really feed into the style that I'm probably going for down at my workshop, which is more modern industrial. So it's kind of nice to bring that energy up into this space as well. But I kind of figured based on these photos that going with a white creamy look on them will be the way to go. You know, as much as it'd be nice to create these like black, dark industrial windows, I think because I'm painting all the walls up here white, going with white for that is also going to be a great option. In the office, I definitely want to play with unique lighting again. That's why I pulled in this little dinosaur light. Not to say that I want a dinosaur light, but it represents unique lighting in my mind. So it just reminds me to, you know, let's come up with a cool solution, a fun DIY light that we can create. Now, in terms of layout, okay, hear me out. I think this is what's going to work because in my mind before, I was going to put a desk here I would sit here you know so I can walk around and then maybe we would put I don't know depending on where the door goes maybe we would put a chair here right put a rug uh, maybe some storage here but when I started pulling the photos I actually ended up getting this idea for creating kind of like an L-shaped desk I really really dislike having my back to doorways I don't know if you guys feel the same way but I just don't enjoy that so I need to be able to see the space or at least see if people are coming I just I, I've seen too many horror movies no ma'am so I thought, okay, what if we create some kind of L-shaped situation? So my chair can go here, my computer could be here, or here, potentially, my desktop computer. This gives me a little place to do some writing or have my laptop here when I wanna be a little bit more mobile. We got some office-related stuff here, got some a cabinet here, maybe some more cabinets on this side. We bring in a chair here, we get a cool rug, Maybe we do some cool lighting situation over here. We have some lighting on here. We could even do a side table here. Then we have the beautiful window. Hey, even we could even do a small little cabinet underneath the window. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> actually looking at this space. I know we kind of have to imagine that this is gone, but I really think that we're gonna have enough room for a chair in this back corner, uh, like a cabinet that sits right here beside the window. Ooh, we could do like a little bench top here. That's possible in front of the window. It might be a nice place, especially for the dog. I didn't really think about that, but that could be nice or just, you know, like a low cabinet with some cubbies down here. But I do think that yes, we could probably fit a chair here and then have this like wraparound desk situation maybe here. So when I'm sitting at my desk, I can see through the window that we'll see in the studio and see people coming. Actually, let's talk about this. What we do need to decide is how would we like to design the door? because this is going to impact how I build the wall. I was thinking it would be kind of nice to do a pocket door into the office so that it doesn't impact the space in the office and it doesn't impact the space in the studio. But if we do a pocket door, I still want it to match the style of whatever wall window situation we go with. <laughs> so also need to think about that. I mean, again, I could probably DIY something custom to make it look like this wall but we really just need to figure out how we want it to work. We might be able to just put the window area here, like maybe from the top of the ceiling point to the end of the window. And then the door also becomes part of the window scape. And then this is just wall, which would be kind of nice. I mean, we, I definitely want to build in more wall, you know? Or would it just be nice to do glass all the way across? I don't know, design paralysis. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. Have some pride for the love of God. <laughs> The only reason why this is very important now is it's going to impact how I build the wall. Am I gonna be building in lots of studs? Where is the window gonna start? So these are things that I need to decide. So if you guys can weigh in and give me some insight of what you think, that would be grand. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna need to know very soon. Going completely left field on the window idea, as a nerd, 
I do watch a lot of Marvel and fantasy TV shows, and on the show called Loki, which is a Marvel show on Disney, there is a character called Kane, and he has this kind of study library office situation, but there's a window that's behind him, and it's circular, and it's really freaking cool. It's got this like fun movement design on it, and I thought that could also be really cool to build into this wall and then do kind of like a translucent paper or something to make it look kind of magical, that could be a fun idea too. But my worry is, do I feel like I would outgrow that and then I'm stuck with this window that, like, would I outgrow it? Maybe, I don't know if I would, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm like, who cares about the future, build for the now, which I 100% back. But at the same time, I don't know. Timeless, nerdy, you just choose your burden. Let's move on to the storage base. We don't really have a lot to say other than I know that I'm gonna do a pocket door because I don't wanna take space in the office and I don't wanna take up space in the storage room. So if we build a pocket door into that wall, which is gonna be a lot easier to do when you're starting from scratch, I think that'll be the way to go. And then in this room, I'm gonna be taking all the shelves that are currently in my studio now. These are all from Ikea, just like basic wood shelves. And I'm just gonna line this back wall. We're gonna line this wall and we're gonna line this wall. It's just gonna be like literal, a giant space of storage. That's it. <laughs> nothing fancy, nothing fun, just a pure old storage system. She ain't fancy, but she does work. And then I wanted to quickly chat about the stairway. I don't have a mood board for this, but I have some ideas, so I do wanna talk about it. Now, I've said this in the past, I am going to be welding the railing for the stairway going up, but I was thinking this might be a really great place to do something fun and creative, like a cool mural, hang a really neat light on the, the other side of the wall. All I know is that I really want the stairway to be fun, creative, and colorful, and just feels like you're walking into creative land, to Danny land, to DIY Danny land. So in terms of next steps, I need to map out my electrical. So where are all the plugs gonna live? And let me tell you, there's gonna be a lot, especially in the floor. This is something that I learned from my mom's studio space. It, she had all these plugs in the floor and it was so helpful. So I'm definitely gonna build a lot of plugs into the floor. There's gonna be a lot of plugs on the walls and it's just, it's gonna be plugs bonanza. <laughs> or, sorry, Jeffrey. It's gonna be a moderate amount of plugs that work within the constraints of our electrical system. <laughs> After that, we need to build the walls. We need to then run that electrical. Then we're gonna to need to start insulating. Then we're gonna to need to start drywalling. Literally everything. We're gonna to need to put in flooring. And then at that point, after all that's done, then we can finally start getting into the good stuff, which is designing. Well, friends, we certainly have a lot of work ahead of us, but I can't wait to bring you guys with me. Thank you so much. I can't wait to read all your comments and your suggestions, so please leave them in the comment section below. What do you think I should do in the office? What do you think I should do in this main studio space? What didn't I talk about that you think I should put in here? I wanna hear everything. Please share with me and I will try to respond to as many comments as I can. Big thank you again to the sponsor of today's episode, June's Journey. If you're looking for a cool app, you love murder mystery, you love hidden object games and this app is definitely for you there is a link in my description box go check it out and of course big thank you to my patreon family i love you guys thank you for being my community my main support system when it comes to creativity and of course my friends as always stay positive stay creative and keep on DIYing. bye bye <laughs>